Hello, everyone. David Alfred Ostrowski, and in this recording, I'm going to be giving a quick demo to GitHub Actions. So, Circle CI is the name of the game with DevOps, right? Supporting automated build and verification of build. GitHub Actions is GitHub's answer to that. So, I'm just I'm just going to do a quick demo, get you started with GitHub Actions if you haven't been exposed to it prior. All you really did to have at this point is signed up for a GitHub account. And all the code that I'm using, I'm gonna put a reference to this video that you can download the code and step through it in exactly the same way that I'm presenting it to you. Okay, so I'm at my GitHub and I've signed in. You have to do that to make sure that you have the privilege of setting up your repository. So I'm going to start from scratch here, click on repositories, and I'm going to call it, let me find an original name here, Actions Golang Demo. Let's call it Test Demo. Okay. So, so like that. Let's use that. Okay. So I created a new repository and or it's testing for that, right? So I'm going to call it GitHub Actions Demo. There we go. GitHub Actions, Golang Demo. So that's the name of my repository. Let's put in some Golang code. And I'm going to use like super simple code here, real simplified Golang. And this just gives you a starting point. If you're not familiar with Golang, I think you're going to hopefully appreciate this. So just re uh, bring in package main importing format. Doing formatting, print your basic hello world, okay? This should be goes without a lot of explanation here, right? So let me just commit my changes here. Oh, I got to name it. That's let's, let's call it main.go, right? Now if I can commit. Very good. Commit my changes. So the interesting, interesting part of actions is that all I need to do is specify YAML file, which is a just a, a definition file. Once I commit that, I go through that process. It initiates on a GitHub server, the whole GitHub actions type build. So it presents a build that actually runs the code on their servers. So that is really powerful. And I like this with GitHub because most people already have their code in GitHub. So if you're looking for a Circle CI solution, this is very convenient, right? Because you already have your code there and it's better to have one comprehensive solution than working towards the integration of GitHub with perhaps another Circle CI type solution. So, so let me continue here. I'm going to create an, uh, an additional file here. I'm gonna do an add file. I clicked create new file. I have to be careful with my naming of the file. I'm going to call it dot GitHub. If you don't, it's it's not going to recognize it. So I have to be careful in naming this directory. Dot GitHub workflows. And when you use the forward slash, it starts creating your directory. So you don't have to do explicit uh, uh, creation of directories here. So here I'm going to create a file I'm going to call it YAML, hello.yaml. Let me cut paste it in. We'll take a look at it and then we can run it and see how it works. You commit. To, oh, before I commit it, let's take a look at it. Okay, first. So here I have just the name hello world and it's triggered on the push on the commit. Once I do that commit, that initiates the GitHub action, right? So here I have jobs and under hello runs on Ubuntu latest. 
So interestingly, uh, when I started running this code, it had you the specific Ubuntu versions. If you specify the wrong version, sometimes this this code may break. So I changed it to latest. That's that is what got it up and running for me. So all I have to say is be careful. You start specifying uh, Ubuntu latest. It may stall out and be looking for that particular version. So beggars can't be choosers, right? We got free resources here. So we're going to just take whatever they give us at this point, at least to get the experience and up and running. And then if you have more sophisticated solution, then you may be interested in more of the specifics. But let's just see it work. Okay. Steps. I'm going to call it Hello World and just run Echo Hello World on the completion. So let me do the commit and the commit is going to initiate my GitHub action, right? So let's run that to the commit. And it's initiated so I can go into actions, a click up here at the top and I have a workflow that's already been initiated called create hello YAML. So let's click into that and click into the solution and it completed already, it ran through the steps. Okay, set up the job. I can see a breakdown here on the diagnostics. It ran the whole world program and did a job completion. So there you go. We've put together a minimal Golang code, wrote a YAML script and pushed it and started actions and saw the response end to end. So, this is super exciting. It's a nice way to step into it. Of course, with YAML, you can do really sophisticated workflows and tests and different things on your code. Let's try something a little slightly more sophisticated. Let's do a lint file. So for those of you that are not familiar, lint is a static checking tool really an extension of your compiler, right? To do more extensive static tests on your code. So this can be leveraged to great extent to perform different types of testing. Here, we're just going to run the Lint tool, watch it run, download it, watch it run, and, and use it as such. So here, I'm gonna add a new file, and I'm going to call this lint.yaml running it in the same GitHub workflows directory. And I call it lint YML, right? And again, I'm copying in the contents. I'm going to make this available with this recording. Just look down below and I'll have a GitHub. You can see exactly what I use in here so you don't have to copy last every byte of code. So let me, again, step through this, just talk to it briefly and then run, watch it run, and, and hopefully everything will turn out appropriate, right? So here I'm calling this lint go code, and it's triggered on the push, meaning the commit of this YAML file, right? And here I have the jobs. I have a lint job. It's going to run. I did specify Ubuntu. It worked. So this is something to keep an eye on. You might want to switch this to Ubuntu latest moving forward, but this worked for me. Hopefully it'll work this time too as well, right? You could never, if you're in the business, you never know, right? But let's uh, 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 keep an eye on that. Steps, it uses actions. So it's going to check out my code. And these are running out of containers, okay? So it's going to build that into a container and it's going to also reference Go and run a containerized version of Go. If you notice, everything's running in the background, right? So I'm not setting up the environment. So the actions is relying on Dockerized versions of these files. Okay, so this is uh, all running in the background. So you have to, as you get into more elaborate builds, have a deeper understanding of what's going on. So here, I have a stable is set to false, and the Go version we have a specified Go version that's going to be be running in the background to test that. Then I actually have the step that is going to initiate the job. If you're not familiar with curl, curl is giving me the equivalent of an HTTP REST style command of downloading 
the file. In this case, I'm downloading a Golang based version of Lint. Okay. Lint can be a whole separate presentation or series of. Okay. So, if you're not familiar with Lint, you might want to dig into something else. But for brevity, we're just going to leave it as such. It's a static development tool. And I'm downloading it and I have the go path. Again, this is referencing the containerized version. So you start getting these more expansive uh, YAML files, it's going to be in your best interest of going out and finding something that does approximate what you're interested in, in your Circle CI type build and approximating it. And of course, it's going to be somewhat of a try and test a, a, a set of experimentation here to get this up and running. And then I'm going to run that lint code against the goal line. Okay. And that's it. So let's fire it up. Okay. They do the commit again. It's an implicit run. When I do the commit, let's try it. Commit that changes. It's going to fire off actions. It's going to run on a separate server. And most importantly, it's not going to charge me for it. So that's the beauty of running this all in GitHub. I don't have to pull it out. I don't have to go to a separate piece of software. And a lot of these, these jobs we go through these actions right as developers on github you're going to be pushing up your changes so this is in my opinion super convenient let's look at actions and see how it's doing okay so one thing to keep in mind and i've seen this it's been identified on the web as some type of bug like it's launching two jobs instead of one it should only be launching a single job there's no absolute reason for that but as long as it's running okay we're still batting a thousand in my opinion, right? So if I see any um, <clears throat> um, configuration that help avoid this, or, you know, you can um, follow that, okay. But it's obviously not supposed to be creating multiple jobs. I was getting multiple jobs with the hello in earlier runs. Now the hello is only running once, okay. So here I got the green light on the Lint YAML. I got one of the versions and I got another one um, queried out. Let's click in and see if it worked appropriately. So I got the hello and let me click in. And it looks very similar to the last job. Create a run version, operating system, run image. It gives me some diagnostics here. It ran, the program gave me the appropriate output and it cleaned up the orphan process. So <clears throat> it ran lint. We don't have anything to really test against because we don't have any meat to this application. But we were able to download Lint and initiate in the context of a GitHub action that we launched it using a, a YAML file and specified everything appropriately. And we got the results back without any errors. So this is a great starting point, right? If you want to integrate and become familiar with Google uh, GitHub actions and how you can leverage it to build a more Circle CI influenced job flow right out of your existing GitHub. So thanks for listening. Hope this helps and take care. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll, I mean, I'm going to make this available so you don't have to painstakingly look at the recordings to get any of the nuances of the ammo files. Okay. Thanks again. Take care. Bye now.